in this video i explain types of fluid flow now what is a fluid fluid means it may be liquid or it may be air or a gas and every fluid have some characteristics means every fluid have some properties and this property may change or may not change so based on this property the fluid flow is classified in a different different classifications so first is the steady flow and unsteady flow second uniform and non uniform flow third is laminar and turbulent flow fourth is compressible and incompressible flow fifth is rotational and irrotational flow and last one is one dimensional two dimensional and the three dimensional flow so first we understand the steady flow steady flow is defined as that type of flow in which fluid characteristics like velocity pressure density at a point do not change with respect to the time let suppose we consider this is the one pipe and from the pipe we supply the water so from this end the water is supplied and from this end the water is out and at this point we measure the velocity of the waters and the value of velocity is the 5 meter per second and time is the 9 am now after the few seconds or few minutes or few hours we can measures the velocity again at this points and we get the answer of velocity is 5 meter per seconds okay means here what we understand the velocity is velocity at particular point do not change with respect to time then it is called as the steady flow okay means here velocity are not change with respect to time so instead of velocity we can also measure the pressures or density to understand the definition of steady flow now how this steady flow is defined in a mathematical equations so it may be defined by the different three properties so this symbol is indicate the partial differential v means velocity this p means pressure and this rho means density so partial derivation of velocity with respect to the time is equal to zero now what is this x0 y0 and z0 so it is a fixed point in a fluid field so this point so this point have some value in a x y z coordinates second equation is the partial differential of the pressure with respect to the time is equal to zero and third is the partial differential of density with respect to time is equal to zero so this equation is indicate the steady flow now second is the unsteady flow so unsteady flow is the opposite to the steady flow in a steady flow what we mention at a particular point the velocity pressure density do not change with times so in a unsteady flow we need to mention the opposite statements so unsteady flow is that type of flow in which the velocity pressure or density at a point change with respect to time okay, i mean suppose at this point at the 9 am we measures the velocity is 5 meter per seconds and after the 5 minutes we again measure the velocity and the velocity is change from 5 to 10 or 5 to 4 3 to 1 means we get the different answer compared to the 5 then it is called as the unsteady flow and mathematically it is denoted by these equations means for the steady flow we mention it's equal to zero so here it does not equal to zero means partial differential of velocity with respect to time does not equal to zero partial differential of the pressures with respect to times does not equal to zero so this is the definition of the steady flow and unsteady flow now second classification is the uniform and non uniform flow uniform flow is defined as that type of flow in which the velocity at any given time does not change with respect to space means here the one sentence is increase okay which sentence is increase so here the velocity is also mentioned time is also mentioned so this part is increase does not change with respect to space now what is meaning of space space means length of direction of the flow now suppose here we see this is the diagram of the venturi meters so here we see 
this is the pipe okay and this is the conversion area of the venturi this part is the throat and this is the diverging portions of the venturi and again the constant portion are there here we see this velocity meter is indicate the certain value okay so suppose we divide these things in a different five section so this is the one section means the cross section area is same so here velocity is remain same then it is called as the uniform flow but when the water or any fluid is enters in this converging portion so its velocity start to change so here we see that here different velocity is there here the different velocity is there so here the velocity is changed and it is called as the non uniform flow again the water is enters in this constant area so in this constant area means in a pipe the velocity is remains again same then it is called as the uniform flow so again we repeat this definition uniform flow is defined as the type of flow in which velocity at any given time does not change with respect to space so first first space is this one okay so here velocity is constant this is the converging portion so in converging portion velocity is change so it is called as the non uniform flow then here this throat portion then in diverging portion so in diverging portion the velocity is again change so then it is called as the non uniform portions and the last one is this pipe portion so in pipe portion the velocity is constant then it is called as the uniform flow mathematically uniform flow is mentioned as this way the partial differential of velocity with respect to the space so here the s is written and the time is constant then it's equal to zero now what is this is indicate it is indicate this change of velocity rho s is indicate the length of flow in the direction of s now next is the non uniform flow so it is a flow is that type of flow in which velocity at given time changes with respect to the space means with respect to the space the velocity is changed so where the velocity is changed in this image are examples in this converging portion velocity is changed in diverging portion velocity is changed so in a converging and diverging portions that is a non uniform flow is there and in this pipe at the inlet and the pipe at the outlet the flow is the uniform flow and for the non uniform flow instance of equal to we mention does not equal to zero now before moving towards the various types of the fluid flow i request to like the video and subscribe my channels for watching the more video related to fmhm as well as other subject of mechanical engineering for the fmhm subject various link is provided in descriptions as well as in card for other subject i request to visit the playlist third is the laminar and turbulent flow so laminar flow is defined as that type of flow in which the fluid particle move along well defined path or streamlines and all the streamlines are straight and parallels so here we see this one image this is one pipe and from this pipe suppose the water is pass okay and water is moving along the well defined path so here we see this arrow is moving okay and these are the various layers of the waters this is one layer second third fourth fifth and sixth and these all the layers are straight and parallel so here we see these all layer are straight and it is also parallel to the each others then it is called as the laminar flows so here one image is so that it is the one canal and from the canal the water is flowing so when we see the water is completely steady so it is called as the laminar flows when here some down portion is coming in this canals then what happens we can see this water is flowing in a zigzag manner then it is called as the turbulent flows and the these regions where the flow is start to convert from laminars to the turbulence then it is called as the transitional flows for defining the laminar flow or turbulent flow that is a one numbers are there this number is called as the reynolds numbers and based on the reynolds numbers we can define this flow is laminars or this flow is the turbulent flows does the part particles move in laminar or the layer gliding smoothly over the adjacent layers so this type of the flow is called as the streamline flow or also called as the viscous flow so when the water is smoothly moving from the adjacent layers from the one over one over another then it is called laminar flow or a streamline flow or a viscous flow now second is the turbulent flow so turbulent flow is that type flow in which the fluid particle is move in a zigzag way so here we see in this pipe 
so water is moving on this zigzag way here also in the canals or rivers or in the sea you can see that the the water is moving on zigzag way then it is called as the turbulent flow or in a lake or canal we can see this type of the smooth flow then it is called as the laminar flow so due to the moment of the fluid particles in a zigzag way the eddies formation takes place which are the responsible for the higher energy loss so in a turbulent flow what happens the fluid are moving smoothly from the one adjacent layers to the another layers so there are the less losses are there okay but in turbulent flow it is moving zigzag way so eddy formation is takes place and the lots of high energy losses are there for a pipe flow the type of flow is determined by the non dimensional numbers and this non dimensional number is called as the reynolds numbers so what is the equation of the reynolds number equations of the reynolds number is v into d divided by small v so what is the v v is sorry d is the diameter of the pipe capital v is the mean velocity of flow in pipe and divided by small v it is the kinetic viscosity of the fluid it is also mentioned as the rho vd divided by mu okay so it is further simplified from that equations and we get these equations now the value of reynold number means we need to put the velocity diameters and kinematic viscosity in these equations and we get some answer and this answer is suppose less than 2000 then the flow is called as the laminar flow if reynold number is more than 4000 then it is called as the turbulent flows and suppose it is in between from the 2000 to 4000s then it is called as the transitional flow so on the basis of the reynolds number the fluid flow is classified in a three types laminar turbulent and transitional flow fourth is the compressible and incompressible flows so this term is given based on the density so compressible flow it's that type of flow in which the density of the fluid changes from point to point or in another words density rho is not constant for the fluid thus mathematically the compressible flow is rho does not equal to constant so what is compressible flow compressible flow means the density is change means it is not constant for the fluids so what is the equation of the density equations of the density is the mass divided by volume okay so we know that the mass is constant then suppose the volume is change so which type of the fluid is called as the compressible so air or various type of the gas is compressible because the volume of air is change so in our bike in a, our bike various tires are there in the tires we feel the compressed air so what is compressed air compressed air is the air which have a higher pressures so where it is compressed so we reduce the volume of air then it is called as the compressible flow incompressible flow means the density is constant means it is not changed so incompressible flow is that type of flow in which density is constant for the fluid flow so rho is equal to constants so generally liquid are incompressible because the volume of the liquid is not reduce while gases are compressible air is are compressible so mathematically incompressible flow is constant means density is equal to constant means density is constant then it is called incompressible incompressible means generally all the liquids are incompressible compressible flow means density is change and when density is change for the which type of fluid so it is change for various types of air or gas then it is called as the compressible flow so for the air or gas we use the compressors to get the compressible air or compressible gas okay so in a compressor we compress the various types of the gases and its pressure is increase and in a pump we increase the pressure of a liquid or a waters okay then it is called as the incompressible flow next parameter is the rotational flow and the irrotational flow so rotational flow is that type of flow in which the fluid particles while flowing along a stream lines also rotate about their own axis now here we see this diagram is for the rotational flow and this constant line is our stream lines or a flow lines and this smile is is the fluid particles 
okay so here we see the smiley are in a different directions okay what do you understand from that from that we can understand that the fluid particles is rotated about their o1 axis and in the second image we can see it is the e rotational flow so in e rotational flow this is a streamlines or a flow line and this smiley is a fluid particles and here we see the all the smileys are in a same way okay means they are not rotated about their o1 axis and it is called as the e rotational flows so if the fluid particles while flowing along a streamline do not rotate about their o1 axis then this type of the flow is called as the e rotational flow and the last one is the one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional flows so we can know that any particles or any components available in a three dimensional coordinate suppose we know that it is a cartesian coordinate systems okay so we draw the three line that is the x axis y axis and z axis so same way any fluid are also able to move in a three directions that is in x coordinate y coordinate and in the z coordinates and all these three coordinates it have some different velocity okay so in a one dimensional flow is that type of flow in which the flow parameter such as velocity is functions of time and the one space coordinate only so we know that that is a three coordinates are there x y and z so from the one dimensional we can understand it is the one space coordinate that is one space coordinate means only in a x directions so for steady one dimensional flow the velocity is function of the one space coordinate only the variation of velocity in another two mutually perpendicular direction is assumes negligible means in a y and z directions the velocity is zero hence mathematically for one dimensional flow we can written this way so that is the u is equal to fx v is equal to zero and w is equal to zero now what is u v and w so u v and w are the velocity component in x direction y and z direction respectively means in a x directions the velocity of the fluid is u in a y direction velocity of the fluid is v and in the z direction the velocity of the fluid is w okay so here only it is flow in a one directional or one dimensional or it is a component of the one space coordinate system so u is equal to fx v and w is zero two dimensional flow is that type of flow in which velocity is a function of time and two rectangular space coordinates say x and y for for a steady two dimensional flow the velocity is function of two space coordinate only which two coordinate x and y so variations of velocity in the third direction is negligible means in a z directions the velocity is zero thus mathematically for the two dimensional flow u is equal to f1 xy v is equal to f2 xy and the third one is zero so w is equal to zero third direction means z directions in a three dimensional flow so velocity is functions of time and the three mutually perpendicular directions but for steady three dimensional flow the fluid parameters are functions of three space coordinate x y z only thus mathematically for the three dimensional flow u is equal to f1 x y z v is equal to f2 x y z and w is equal to f3 x y z so here we complete all the types of the fluid flow so thank you for watching this video if you learn something then like the video and subscribe my channels for watching the more video of mechanical engineering and don't forget to share with your friends